Welcome to the world of tomorrow! Well, rather, Mugen. Um, today I'm going to show you a tutorial on making a striker. Now, strikers could be taken as many different things. Um, in this case, striker would mean a additional character that jumps in off the side of the screen, attacks your opponent, and then jumps out and escapes. Now, I've already coded it, and I'm going to show you the basic, uh, the basic um, way it's going to look when it's actually done in Mugen. Then I'll explain the coding how it's done. So first, this is my text function command, I'm going to use him. So I'll press A and X, that's the command I decided. And look who's above him, it's Dio from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. He jumps in, uh, lands, attacks him, and runs away. Now, what if Kung Fu Man were to hit him? Let's see. Oh, he got hit and he's running away. Like a little bitch. Now, to explain how this is all done, um, First off, you need the command. The command I'm going to use is uh, named Dio Striker. The command is A plus X. So you push both of those keys together and it's going to make Dio uh, appear. And um, I'm going to go down to the actual command. And I, I have a very um, basic right now. So uh, trigger will be the command. Then player has to have control and player cannot be in the air to do it. It's going to be state 2000. Now, uh, the sprites, I roughly align them, they're not correct, but you need a certain set of sprites. Now, these are the set of sprites that you're going to need, right here. So, you have the first row, which is him jumping in and landing. These three are landing, so him jumping in, landing, then you have the actual attacks, like this is a punch here, then the kick. So that's the attack, and if he's hit, which he will be most likely if it's a helper, um, this is to him uh, hitting the face and falling backwards. And these are landing on the floor right here, and this is getting up right here. So, say he jumps in and he gets hit in the face, he'll fall back, hit the ground, and then jump back up to go back to stand. Now after that, he's gonna um, run off screen using the blast frames here. So pretty simple, right? So it's like, I, I'm, I'm gonna assume 5, I don't recount. So jumping in, that's one set. Landing, that's the second set. The actual attack, that's the third set. Um, if he gets hit, the fourth set, and getting up, the fifth set, and lastly the sixth set, running off a uh, battle. Alternatively, you can use him jumping back out. That works just as well. Now, um, uh, as I said, I roughly aligned his sprites in Kung Fu Man here. So here's a look at him. Uh, okay, so this is him like start jump into actually jumping, and then. Falling, landing, getting up, uh, the punch and kick, actually attack, the actual attack. Blah. Then this is him hit. Just like I would code a regular 5000, I will, um, I will align them the same way for him. There's no exception. And then him laying down, same way you'd align it. Getting up, same way you'd align it. Turn and run away. Now, the actual animation sets. We have animation... 8,000. I'm going to use 8,000 for the example. So 8,000, which is him jumping in. So, whoop, jumps in. Last two are looped, or negative one for infinite time, because he's going to jump in off the side of the screen. So, hold on. Get this load. Okay. So, he's going to jump in off the side of the screen, and he's going to be infinite loop here until he lands on the ground here. Once he lands on the ground, he'll change, change state and animation to this one which is him landing and getting back up to that and then after he lands and uh, sets himself up he's, he's gonna do the attack <coughs> which is another set of animations so falling in landing and the attack and there's no lo infinite loop time for this it's just regular time next he's gonna run off so say after he finishes his attack He'll just turn around and run off. I have to flip these horizontally to make them look right, but you get the point. And the last frame is going to be negative one, so he'll stay in the run frame like forever until you kill him. And the next set is Dio hit, as in if he's hit while he's jumping in, or if he's you know hit while attacking, he'll appear like this. Then he'll fall back and stuck in the last two frames, so it's like this. So it's going to stay like this until he hits the floor. Well, until this axis hits the floor, really. And when he does hit the floor, then this one's going to play. Dio land. Ooh. 
Ooh, ooh. I think that black stuff around his body is supposed to be blood. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. So he'll fall, hit the floor just like that, and get back up. Now all that's mixed into one. I think it's easier that way. And that's all. So you need six sets of animations. Jumping in, landing, attacking, running away, getting hit, and uh, uh, getting up from the ground. Now for the actual attack. Now if you remember, the command is AX and it's going to be state 2000. So go to state 2000. I said it's already coded, so I'll just show you how it's done. State 2000 is going to be Kung Fu Man's state. Kung Fu Man is going to uh, summon a helper which is Dio and Dio is a helper that has all these other states that tell him what to do so this is all there is to Kung Fu Man that's it and the helper controls all the other states so what I decided to use was the uh, taunt animation for his attack so when you press AX Kung Fu Man will bow which is his taunt and he will summon a helper at time equals zero which is uh, pretty much right away helper type is uh, deprecated in Mugen 1.0 but you can still use it. Um, I would not recommend using it because um, helper type equals normal works perfectly fine. Um, helper type equals player. All this does is I'll put a second note here. Um, helper type equal player means the helper is confined to the uh, screen and may not leave it. And what I mean by this is, man, leave it as in. Normally, a helper can pass on and off the screen, whereas if it's a helper type equals player, it cannot. It's it's a, it's going to be um, thought of as a player character, not a normal background element thing. And then you name him, you give him the state ID, which I decided to use the same state for easier uh, finding. Um, the state type for the actual helper, which is Dio himself, is going to be two ten. Uh, position is going to be negative 30, which is to the left, and negative 50, which is up. So he'll instead like, so instead of like starting off, this is zero zero. Well, this is zero zero. So this is my zero zero. Instead of starting off on where I am, position zero zero, he's going to start at negative 30, and then negative 50 up. So we'll start off here. Now, to make this work properly, you need to set the pause type to back. It, the other pause type options you have are P1, which means he'll appear on PlayStation. Uh, blah, blah. He'll appear on Player One's um, zero zero. P2, he'll appear on uh, Player Two zero zero. Uh, there's left, which means he appears on the left side of the screen. So if you're on the right side and you do it, he'll come out the left side. There's right, and if you're on the left side, he'll come out the right side. It's it's depends on what your helper is really doing. If you want to use that. And then there's um, back and front. Um, back means it's behind Kung Fu Man. From his axis point, back. And then there's front, which is from his axis point, front. So we don't have to jump up behind Kung Fu Man, so we're going to use back. So by default, Mugen is going to put his position to the back of Kung Fu Man, usually the wall. This wall here is the back. And negative 30 is here, negative 50 is like somewhere up here. So this is Dio's start position compared to the Mugen screen. See? So he'll jump up like this, like that, attack, and run away. Simple. Now, own palette means he will have his own palette that if someone burns him, um, it will not affect the character. The character's palette will not just suddenly turn red for no reason. It's only going to be on him. Uh, super move time and pause time. Basically, if another character does a super, Dio will not move, so he's confined to the um, restricted restriction of super pause and other... Um, things that pause time and slow motion and all that stuff. And this I just kept here for the lulls. So that's all there is for Kung Fu Man. He has a basic state, a uh, basic change state, and a one helper summon code. That's all Kung Fu Man needs. Now for the actual Dio. Now, I, I label them uh, pretty well here. So this is Dio Striker jumping in. Uh, player summons him, 210. So Dio starts up off screen, which you see from here, these two. Now he's going to jump in with this velocity of negative 3 up because it's Y, and positive 5, right. So he'll be like, yeah. So he'll jump in and animation 8,000. 8,000 here is jumping in. Whoosh. Whoosh. Now, because I, I, I recommend using no physics, uh, the move type is I because it's idle uh, motion. It's not an attack. So you don't want the opponent being forced to guard for whatever reason because he's not really attacking you. 
Alternatively, I think you just leave this out. Yeah, I think you, I think you leave it out because it's not an attack. Uh, type equals air. So it's an air type meaning he'll be treated like he's in the air. And physics, and as I said, he doesn't need to take juggle points away. He doesn't need to give you power. He doesn't need anything else. So because you're using physics a n, you need to apply a, velo uh, a gravity code. Otherwise, a velocity code. You need something to bring him down to the ground. Otherwise, this code will make him fly like this. He'll fly like, why? But with the gravity, he'll fly, whoa, whoa, boom, hit the ground. Now, these hit override code, this code here is simply, in case someone hits him while he's jumping in on the screen, he will be, uh, he'll, his state will go from state 210 to state 220. A hit override basically overrides any, um, any uh, hit def code that the other opponent has. Like, say, uh, he, this helper is hit by a custom state code. It's not going to work because his hit override tells him if he's hit, he'll go automatically into 220, which is him falling back. So uh, a grapple move will not work on him. And to make sure of that, I had, I had a uh, not hit by. So he is not hit by normal throws, super throws, and hyper throws. Now this kind of confused me for a second because as far as I remembered, everything needs a SCA in front of it, like st uh, stand, crouch, air. But not hit by does not. And if you check the doc files, it says so. Um, yeah, it says blah, 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 right here in the example, not hit by anything, value SCA, sand, crouch, air, not hit by normal attacks and projectiles, there's nothing here, this is where the SCA goes normally, but it's blank, so you just not hit by normal attacks, not hit by all projectiles, which is strange, um, the other um, values and attributes you can use are right here, when you click on uh, hit override from the side here, uh, this, all this stuff comes up on it. And this basically means stand, crouch, air, normal attack, super attack, hyper attack, normal projectile, super projectile, hyper projectile, normal throw, super throw, hyper throw. If someone codes a character correctly and they use the proper values for their attacks, then this will work perfectly. If someone does not code it correctly, it may cause an error, but that's not your fault, it's their fault. So. Basically, uh, uh, this is Dio jumping in on screen. Gra Gravity is bringing him down to the ground, and he is not going to be hit by any throw attacks. And if he is hit by a normal attack or projectile, uh, well, if he's hit by any attack or a projectile, he'll be sent to his um, hurt state. So, and then this is uh, the change state for when Dio lands on the ground. He'll need to, um, you know, land on the ground. Uh, I usually use this code: position Y. Uh, greater than zero, which means below the ground, because the ground level is zero. So if it's greater than zero, one, two, three, four, five, it's going to go down. So if he's below that, it's going to change his position. And vel y, if he's going down, obviously he has a vel velocity because you can't go down and not have a velocity. It doesn't make sense. So if either one is, if, if both of them are checked, like he's going down constantly and he's below zero, then it's going to change state to two, two eleven. Now two eleven, I named this. Dio, striker, landing, and attack. The way this is going to work is he'll ha he's going to have a, a type of stand because he's standing now. His move type is A because he's attacking. His physics is still N because I don't want him to have any physics uh, or movement uh, or control or anything like that. I want to control him myself. With, it's an N gives me that total control of what he does and how he moves and everything. He will not take juggle points. He will not give me power. He will not move with the velocity. His animation is 801, 8001. And 8001 is him, Dio, jump, land. That's him. That's landing. That's all 8001 is. And for any attack where your character jumps up in the air and comes down to the ground using a physics no a physics N, you need to have a land state with a pause set equals 1. Blah, pause set uh, trigger equals 1, Y equals 0. Because uh, Y equals 0 is the floor level. Well, I didn't align the sprites right. That's why it looks funny. This here is the floor level. And with uh, trigger one, it means it's constantly forcing him to stand right here on this line. Next is a change animation. This is kind of a fancy little way of doing it. You don't have to do it this way. You can do another multiple state, which is perfectly fine. But I, I think it's easier to do this. So uh, the change animation is going to change the landing animation into the attacking animation. How this works is the trigger one is going to be 
animation equals 8001, which is already right here. So that's a check. And animation time negative one. Animation time negative one means the uh, the animation time the animation is over. So the animation time for this one is four, eight, twelve. So when this last third frame is over, the animation time is also um, done. So so if the trigger is going for the change animation is going to be if the animation is 8001 and the animation is finished playing change to animation 802 8002 element 1 there's no element 0 there's only element 1 which is the starting so if these two are check which it is here and the animation is going to play itself it's going to change to animation 8002 if animation and then we move to the hit def if animation 8002 is active which it will be because of the change animation then this hit def will trigger on animation element 4 and this one also will trigger animation element uh, 11 this is the punch and this is the kick that I gave him just for testing purposes I copy this from the first one it's the same hit override the same uh, not hit by code because he's attacking now he's he's actually there in battle you don't want him to you know be hit and turn to a clone or something so that's what this is for so basically, that's all there is for him landing and actually attacking. You land, and you set the pause set to zero, the y equals zero, and then you change his animation when the animation is over to the attacking animation, uh, element one for the first frame. Then for your hit def, you always make sure you trigger all the attack animation. If I trigger all 8001, this hit def is not going to work because he will not be in 8001 for long. He'll be in 8002 short after. Now, after the attack, he's going to change state when anime time is equal to zero. Wait, huh, why does that work like that? Ah, I meant zero. Yeah, anime time equals zero. I think that works the same. Let me see. Yeah, okay. So, anime time equals zero. So, this, forget what I said before. This is the same thing, really. I don't know why negative one did that, but. Um, It'll change animation when animation 8001 and animation 8001 is finished playing. So it has to be there and it has to be playing and finished for this to change. And the trigger for this is going to be animation time zero. This would, you know, normally this would take effect um, at the end of this, but however, because I changed the animation 8002, when 8002 is over, that's when this takes place. And eight, uh, 2012 is Dio Striker run off. Meaning he's finished attacking. Uh, I don't need to I can erase this again because he's not attacking. Um, he's he's uh, finished the attack, right? So now he's still standing. He has no physics. He's not taking juggle. He's not giving me power. He has no velocity. He's going to play animation 8003. 8003 is deal running off. He'll turn and swoosh. Now, t what is 5? Huh. Okay. 5. So to make him run off, because I have the no velocity, the end velocity, um, I have total control of his velocities and his physics and how he ap operates and everything. So on the fifth frame, which is this one, or I had this one before, I didn't realize how wrong it looked, but this one's better. So on that frame, he's going to dash off negative 15, which means left or behind. So it's going to be negative 15 speed to the behind him. And then after like 50 ticks, he will destroy himself, which will keep the helper from staying on screen or staying in uh, in memory for long. So it's kind of like a, well, it's not a safe fault. It's more or less required that you have a destroy self if you're doing a helper. Next, <clears throat> since this is the basic uh, uh, helper summoning code, the helper jumping in, the helper landing, changing animation to attack and attacking, and then running off. Now we need to be concerned about what if the helpers hit? You have to think of the possibilities like what can happen to this helper if he's out there? You don't want to send one of your troops into a war knowing not knowing what's gonna to happen to them. You know, you want to make sure you know that this person is gonna die and this person is gonna come back alive. So in the event that he does get hit and he dies, Dio, um, he's going to be hit override into this state, twenty twenty, as you can see here, hit override twenty twenty. Always make sure your values and state numbers are correct. Uh, okay, so he'll come here to 2020. 2020 is move type will be air because um, the air just seems to air air uh, type equals air handles him better than type equals s. 
Uh, move type will be hurt, H for hurt. Alternatively, I think you could just avoid this. Physics will be N because I still want to have total control of his body. I don't want it to just like, he gets hit, he flips around, and he just, you know, gets up like nothing's happening. I want him to fly back or something. Jug like a zero power is equal to Ravel said zero zero. Um, animation 8004. Animation 8004 is right here. So he's hit in the face, he falls back, he gets stuck in these last two frames until he hits the floor. So now, because we're using an N physics and he's in the air and he's being knocked even further back into the air, we need to have gravity to take him and bring him back down to the ground. And when he comes back to the ground, at the same uh, change state with the same pause y greater than zero, vel y greater than zero, he's going to change to his next state, 2021. So this is Dio, uh, Dio Striker falls on ground. Now, how does this work? Uh, the same way. Um, he's falling on the ground. He changes state to this one. And this more or less sets him to zero velocity and his position to zero. So he's on the floor now. You know, he, so he gets hit, he falls back, and he lands on the floor. This is to make him land on the floor right here. Now, afterwards, because he's hit, you don't want him to continue the attack or just stand there. So you need to tell him to go to your runaway state or, you know, jump off the screen state. So what you have is a chain state, an animation time equals zero, which means when the animation's finished playing, he'll change to 2012. 2012 is the Dio runoff animation. So when used correctly... Dio will do this. He'll jump in, he'll land, he'll attack, <coughs> then he'll run off. Now, let me show you that again, except I'll like, explain what's going on here. I try to. So, this is the summon code for him and his uh, negative velocity up and f a positive velocity forward, which propels him into the air, and the gravity code sends him back to the ground. Now, the change state code is what makes him land. The pause set code makes him stand on the ground level. Then the change animation code that takes place after his land animation is finished takes effect. The two hit deaths that are only active if this animation is playing is uh, they're working. And afterwards, a change state into his runaway state. And bye! Now, what if I hit him? So he'll jump in and Kung Fu Man punches him. Oh, look at Dio, he's in pain. Oh. So, Kung Fu Man punches him. Automatically, he enters his custom, uh, his, um, his hit override state. His hit override state is 2020. 2020 is him being hurt and falling backwards. Ooh, and stuck in these last two frames. Until he hits the ground. Ooh, and then this is state, uh, the, the landing state for the hit override, which makes him fall back. So, he hits the ground, ooh, rotates a little bit lays down. Then he gets back up, turns around, and runs away like it's no one's business. So you see, that's more or less how you code a helper. I mean, a striker, sorry. Yeah. See, so even if he's hit by what... Let me see if I can do this. Haha. <laughs> ah, there's one thing I forgot to do. <laughs> see, he, he just he ignores the hit pauses or stuff like this. This would have, like, had him stuck there for a while, but he ignores it because I think I set them to. But anyways, uh, let's see two deals together. Okay, didn't work. Oh. Okay, let me go back. Hmm. Yeah, I can't do it at the same time because a uh, keyboard issue, I guess. So yeah, that's that. However, if you see here, I can more or less spam him. And this is cheap, so we have to balance this out, right? So here's what we're going to do. Um, when we made Dio, we gave him an ID number. His ID number is 2000. So for the command here, where we actually uh, limit on what we need to do to summon him, is going to be uh, trigger all code equals, um, let's see, triggers in the trigger doc file. Let's see, time is 24 minutes. Not bad, not bad. Good thing I made most of this beforehand. Uh, the trigger for Dio will be this one. Num helper. This means uh, any number of uh, helpers with the ID or without the ID. If this one alone is any, if the player has less than two helpers total on screen active, 
This one means if the player has less than two helpers with this ID. Um, so that's basically how you limit it. Since he's ID 2000, we're going to limit him to um, num helper 2000 is e is not wait is not greater than or equal to that's not real is not equal to one so if the helper is not equal to one as in if he's not summoned you cannot do the command again if he is summoned wait wait what the hell did I just say okay so hmm okay yeah so you can do this attack if there is no helper on screen already with this um, ID number if there is a helper on screen with this ID number 2000 you cannot do the attack that's what I meant to say and let's see if I can still spam it so yeah yeah see I'm pushing A and X but it's not happening even after he's hit I can't do it until he goes away Oh, there we go. How long is it? Oh, wait. Okay, there. See? It's pretty straightforward, huh? Nice and simple. So, all in all, uh, you need six sets of sprites, which are <coughs> um, the character jumping on screen, landing, attacking, um, getting hit, because they will get hit, hitting the floor, because they will do that a lot, um, getting up, and running away. Then you need, I have only five sets of uh, for animation frames, but the jumping in, the landing, the attack, the running away, the hit, and the land again. Then you have the states, which is the summon code, the the uh, hit over and not hit by code to make him not hit by certain moves, like grabs, and the gravity code to send him down to the ground. Then the actual attack will have a change animation, which changes from landing animation to attack animation when the landing animation is over and pause at uh, y equals zero to keep him on the floor then you have your two hit deaths or however many hit deaths you want uh, with the trigger all of the same animation as what the attack animation is if this is not here then these will probably not work copy and paste the hit override and not hit by because you want the same thing to happen to him if he's hit either way um, then you have the helper, the striker, uh, running away after uh, attacking. Then you have a what if the, ca the striker is hit, they're going to fall backwards and gravity will take control. And when they hit the ground, thanks to this, their possession is going to be set to zero y, y equals zero. And then they'll change animation to run away. So it's kind of like a loop. Let me see if I can draw a tree of it, actually. Okay, blah, blah, blah. okay so... Um, so this is jumping in, and then there's landing, and from landing, he'll go to uh, the attack, which is like, yeah. Okay, so, oh, wow. Well. Okay, so this is jumping into landing, into the attack, and the attack will go into uh, running away. After that, he'll run away. Now, in the event that, say, during this time, um, he is hit, he's going to fall backwards land on the ground then he's gonna uh, get back up I guess that works for get back up he's gonna get back up and then he's gonna run away so either way it leads to running away that kinda makes no sense but it looks kinda cool all the same huh so yeah that's, that's more or less how it is. Thanks for watching.